It's currently winter in Korea, which means it's cold, snowing, and the air is terrible. While there's a ton of things I can show you outside that are really fun, instead, I'm gonna avoid the cold and go inside. Today, I'm taking you to three secret museums you can come and visit when you're in Seoul. Let's go. Less than a mile away from Seoul's biggest attraction is a building that many tourists often just walk on by. However, if we walk down these stairs, we're going to be transported back in time. Let's go check out this hidden museum. Now, to see the main attraction in this museum, you're going to want to look down as soon as you walk in. Looking beneath the glass floor, you'll see houses and alleyways from the Joseon dynasty. You also get to go below the glass floor to walk along the alleyways. It makes you wonder what walls would say if they could talk. This truly is a great place to go if you want to get away from the crowds. As you can see, we were the only ones there. If walking through these alleys isn't enough to transport you to the past, you can bring your imagination to life more by dressing up in some of the traditional clothing. If it's hard for you to imagine the houses at the time, there's a mini replica to show you what it would have looked like. While the main point of the museum is the alleyways, they also have many artifacts on display that they found during the excavation. Now that we've dressed up and walked through the alleyways, if that's still not enough to bring it to life, there's one more thing that might help. A life-size replica of the Hanuk that used to be here. Who would have thought that just below the hustle and bustle of the normal busy crazy soul streets is this quiet empty museum where you can really go to the past and see what it was like to walk the streets of Joseon. Now that we've quite literally stepped into the past, let's fast forward to a time a little bit closer to modern history. 1910, when Japan decided to invade Korea. Today, we're visiting a museum dedicated to one patriot who literally risked his life trying to free Korea from Japan's reign. This is An Jungin, one of Korea's most famous patriots, well known for his acts of trying to free Korea from Japan's reign. As a child, An Jungin did not really like going to school. He preferred being in the mountains, hunting and exploring. Little did he know that this idea of hunting would be a huge part of his life near the end of it. Later in life, An Jungin's father would become a Catholic. Following suit, An Jungin would also convert over to Catholicism. After converting to Catholicism, he helped save Catholic missionaries that came to Korea and also helped spread this religion all over the nation. At a later time, An Jungin and 11 comrades would cut off their left ring fingers. This was an act to show their dedication to Korea. After cutting off their fingers, they used their blood to create a flag that said Korean independence. Today, this flag represents what they went through trying to save Korea. After cutting off his finger and signing the flag for Korea, he knew what he had to do. He made it his mission to kill Ito, the general of Japan, who made all the commands and rules to come and take over Korea. So one day, while Ito was in Harbin, he went there and took a gun and carried out the act of assassinating Ito in efforts to save Korea. After carrying out the execution, he was immediately arrested and tried. 
However, it was not really a fair trial. He was immediately sentenced to death. After his arrest, he was in jail for 144 days before his own death. While in prison, he wrote a treatise on peace in the East to present and explain his ideas about the independence of Korea and his desire for peace for all of humanity. Even with An Jungin's selfless act to try to free Korea from Japan's rule, it was a rather unfortunate ending for him. After his death, Japan still continued to control Korea for 35 more years until 1945, when Korea finally got its independence from Japan and An Jungin's sacrifice was finally worth everything he did to save Korea. An Jungin is not only a hero for helping to save Korea, but he is also a major reason that Catholicism spread throughout the country. This next museum is a hidden museum that tells about the persecution of Catholics throughout Korea. Throughout the Joseon Dynasty, there was four different waves of persecution. Criminals and Catholics were both killed to represent and demonstrate those who might go against the king. Right now, I'm in the Consulate Hall. It's a place for the public to come and pray and just offer their condolences for the martyrs who lost their lives right here. They also have special exhibits so people outside of the Catholic faith can come and still enjoy the beauty of the museum, learn about what happened, but also see some other things. As you can see, there's a lot of brick that they used to build this. The reason for that is because brick has to be laid by hand and the architect really wanted to have the human aspect in the building process. They wanted humans to build the museum. So each brick is hand laid. By now you've been able to see the beauty of the museum, but you might be wondering, why did they build it underground? The architects really put thought into every design of this museum. They wanted it to be underground to represent the blood seeping into the ground from all the martyrs that died here. It's a sad story, but one that is beautifully remembered. Whether you're looking to stay warm in the winter, beat the heat in the summer, or just avoid crowds altogether, I showed you three secret museums where you can go and unlock a lot of Korea's history while roaming around people free. <laughs>